Well, good evening and welcome back to the lab. Um, today on the agenda, we're going to take a look at a the 7B53A, uh, the time-based plug-in. The 7B53A is a 100 megahertz time-base, so I'm actually going to partner that right here with this 7603. This is actually the last piece of the puzzle to get a fully functioning 7603. We took a look at the frame itself. Um, we did a couple of the verticals. We did actually this 7A16, and we did a 7A15 uh, in terms of a calibration. So that gave us the vertical amplifiers. I need the horizontal amplifier, which is the time base. I've had the gear on for a little bit. The scope's actually on. It's just warming up. There's some intensity. I've already uh, calibrated this frame. Did that probably six months ago now. This is a four bay, as denoted by the four, but it's a 7700, so it's a 200 megahertz mainframe, as opposed to the 76, which is a 100 megahertz mainframe. Um, I do have a 79 over there, which is a 500 megahertz mainframe. Uh, a little bit overkill for this time base, but I do have a time base that we'll actually need that for. I'll get the service manual printed out for the time base and take a look at what we need. The 184 has been on for a day and a half, so it's well thermal soaked the crystals, so I should so I'll have stability on that. Uh, the other stuff only needs a 30 minute warm up time. This needs a 30 minute warm up time, so it's on just warming up. Let's see, gear we'll be using for this. Point this up here. I'll be using these these plugins right here, and then I'll be using the 106, the 191, and the 184. So I'll be pulling the 191 down in a future video and actually breaking that open. That needs some power filters replaced, and then I'll be doing a full calibration on that. When I did the initial calibration, I did it with the Rigel's uh, internal frequency counter, and it turned out to be not sufficient. So now that I got an HP with a good reference, I can... Uh, tune the 191 a little bit better, but that'll be a future video. To do this calibration, unfortunately, you will need the extension, either the flexi flexible extension or the hard extension. I have the hard extension, so I'll be using this extensively for this calibration. Um, if you're lucky, you can find these on eBay. They tend to not be inexpensive. These, these go for about $200, uh, these frames, but... Um, Fortunately, I've never needed more than one to do any of these, so everything will be good. So let me get the service manual printed out, and we'll get started. Okay, this is the plug-in set up as requested by the service manual. The side covers are off. The extender is hooked up. The plug-in's hooked up. The service manual calls for a 7A16. I'm going to use a 7A26. The 7A26 is a 200, and 200 megahertz plug-in. I calibrated this one recently, so it's in good shape. I got a voltmeter over here warming up, the 6500, and I got the Rigel warming up because I'll need a second scope. The first thing... Next thing to do is to set the equipment controls as given under the pre preliminary control settings. So I'll go ahead and set everything up that way now. And uh, then I will bring you guys back and we will start making some adjustments on the plug-in. Um, this is about, this is actually sticks out pretty far. Um, this is about as wide as this lens gets. And there's the scope and there's the controls for the plug-in. So. I'm glad I have some depth on the bench because with the scope plus the extender plus the plug-in makes for a pretty long unit. Okay, so for the um, beginning calibration of this, for the vertical, position should be mid-range, AC coupling, polarity is up, full bandwidth. We want 50 millivolts per division. Cal is in, vert mode is left. Trigger source is vert mode. A 
adjusting for a well-defined display. For focus, intensity's mid-ranged. We can illuminate the graticule if we want. Main triggering down here on the plug-in is positive. Mode is auto. Coupling is AC. Source is internal. Delayed trigger runs after delay time. So that needs to be, there's a detent there. That needs to be locked into the detent. Slope is positive. Coupling is AC. If it's if the symbol is on the top half, the button needs to be pressed. If it's on the bottom, the button needs to be out. Uh, source is also internal. Position is mid-range. Fine position is now mid-range. Let's see. Yeah, that doesn't move too far, actually. There we go. I'm off at an I'm off at an angle this way, so I'm I'm looking at it this way. You guys are straight on, so you actually have a better uh, better view of the scope than I do. Magnifier is one x, so that's pressed. Time divisions are delayed time twenty microseconds. Variable should be count. This should be pressed in. This is the delayed delay time, so that needs to be in. Um, the variable selector is in or out. With the orange band, it's out, so that should be in. And they want delay time multi to be 1.0 exactly. It's actually all the way up at 10, so we need to bring this back down. That concludes the preliminary setup. The only thing that I've done to this plugin so far is I have cleaned the switches. Um, I haven't done any troubleshooting on this one. I haven't done any calibration on this one. I noticed some of the switches were stuck and not working, so I have adjusted the switches and that's it. So anything we run into in this calibration procedure, I will ha we'll have to... Uh, Maybe do some troubleshooting. Don't know. This stuff tends to be pretty pretty solid, so I don't know if we'll have too much troubleshooting. Um, the adjustment, the check-in document, is a lot longer than the adjustment document. I'm going to go through the adjustment document, so it's only these couple sections of, or this one section of the service manual service manual for this particular plugin is 193 pages so it's a book in and of itself just by looking at this plugin i can tell that this is an older unit um, everything is gold pcb pcbs with the nice sweeping traces which means it was hand laid out it wasn't computer laid out definitely older than i am but we will bring it back and so we can use it on the bench there's no reason why this can't be a wonderful piece of test gear even given its age so We'll give it another lease on life. So the first calibration routine we have to do is adjusting the trigger DC balance and main trigger level centering. Uh, we'll be working with R72 and R333. And I have to get a, a voltmeter hooked up. I need to look at test, test point 50 and 59 
So let me find out where those are. I'll get the meter hooked up and we'll get started. This is the top of the plug-in. This right here is test point 50 and 59. They're right next to each other. And they're coming through from the other side of the board from over here. So they're coming in from over here to break out on that side. So I got to hook the voltmeter up to that. Oh, this is on the top side of the plug-in. So if I zoom out, they are right there. Okay, I've got the uh, screen turned off so um, I don't burn in the CRT, but the device of interest is the multimeter. So we're at negative 15. So let me figure out exactly what we need to do. Okay, so the positioning knob on this one is actually, you need to use the positioning on the 7A26. So if I move this, it'll, bu it'll jump around. Okay, so we need to adjust the position control of the 7A26 to zero, or as close as we can get. So right now we're at negative 13, going the wrong way. Well, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it because that is, we're on the millivolt scale, so that would be 50, actually it's bouncing between 3 and 5, so that would be 20 microvolts away from electrical zero, so that's well within inside the 3% uh, of the scope, so I'll be happy with that. So now we need to take the... 7A26, switch it to DC, and DC couple the amplifier. Need to get some signals. Be right back. Okay, so our CRT electrical center is actually half a division below, just above a half a division below the main center graticule line. So I can use that as a marker, and we can keep going. Okay, going through step one again, because uh, I realized I made a mistake. I was fighting with it and having some trouble getting the zero set right. Saw a lot of noise. Was thinking it was the environment. Uh, made a small goof. My meter probes were still hooked up. Make sure you take these off when you actually do this adjustment. It'll put a lot of noise into the triggering circuit. So it'll be real hard to get the... Uh, Sure to look right. Let's see if I can actually. Yeah. It'll look like that. Well, it'll look like that because it's on the zero, so it's flipping back and forth triggering. So it'll clean up quite a bit. If I pull these off, and I have to play with this for a little bit because my CRT electrical center is right here. So I want the trigger points at zero to be right there on that line. So let me play with this for a little bit. And then once I get the adjustment made, I'll bring everybody back. Well, it looks like we do have a little bit to troubleshoot on this particular plug-in. If I do this. Oh, I can even make you go away. So we have a bad control. So let me uh, get the control apart and uh, we'll see what we can do to um oh yeah there it goes. So all I did was switch the polarity. There it is and it's back. So yep it's gone. Alright so we have a dead control on the, the control in question is oh, this guy right here, this knob is what I'm wiggling and it's bouncing up and down a little bit pretty good and you guys can see I'll zoom in on the screen all I'm doing is wiggling up and down so alright, something to fix I like it when I actually get to repair something so uh We'll get started on a repair, and I'll bring you guys back if I find anything interesting. Okay, well, this wasn't too, too terrible. Um, I was able to get the control apart, and 
I found out that the switch is just there's these two spring contacts in this phenolic disc and this little wing all it does is when you flip the switch it shorts these contacts so this wing had lost a lot of its uh, spring tension so what I ended up doing was just bending it out just a little bit and then because I have the contact open get this onto frame here real quick you can see this is the actuator for that switch in the front behind there is that potentiometer so I was able to soak this whole control with oil or I mean with uh, alcohol get it all cleaned up the little wing fell off this is the this is the wing to give you an idea of the size I'm working on that's the switch mechanism itself um, what do I have for decent perspective for perspective this is a quarter inch audio jack for like a guitar quarter inch balance cable the whole barrel will barely fit in the shot so that gives you an idea on the size I'm working in to get this scope restored um, but I will get the switch put back together um, once I oil it and uh, then we will be hopefully back in business all right well I tried to rebuild the switch yesterday and the switch ended up being a little too far gone so I was able to turns out I had another control in my storage and box of parts so I got the new control put in everything looks good I'm doing the second part of the calibration this is way zoomed in my point of interest is to give you an idea how zoomed in this is this is my tuning tool the whole tuning tool won't fit in the shot so my point of interest is right here on the graticule we have the trace starting just a little bit above and if I kick it over to the other polarity we should have the trace starting a little bit above you want an equal distance this is actually a little too much so I'm going to go ahead and adjust this just a touch bring this up so we're right there and then kick yeah so we're the zero point of the or the zero volt center of the CRT is this is essentially just a little bit higher of this graticule marker right here move the trace over so so we can see the exact start of the sweep which is here and what I want to do is when I flip the switch it should be equal distant like that's good yeah right there that's about perfect so that finishes up section one yes after you set the vertical position zero it is imperative you do not move this until you're done with the adjustments because it'll bump it off a of zero you'll have to reset it up with the meter again okay so we're gonna adjust the delay time now delayed trigger is uh, runs after delayed time 10 microseconds and what you need to do is you need to change the slope and you want it and we're referencing this for CRT zero so it's actually still telling us not to have moved the position control on the 7A26 but let's see what this does this is pretty much right in the middle that is absolutely perfect actually so we're not going to mess with that at all doing the slope switching and it's not even so 10 microseconds of division we're adjusting the delay trigger now I'm gonna zoom in real quick 
So I'm actually going to use the camera to magnify the trace to help me out. We're going to bring this back. We're checking the delay trigger centering. So that right there, right at the edge, that is CRT center. So I'm going to switch the polarity now. We're switching back and forth. I'm just checking what I'm looking at. I am looking at this right here, and we want it to be equal distant when I'm switching the polarity. It is a touch off. Um, so what I will do is we need to adjust our 435. Let me pull up my better service manual, and I'll be right back. Okay, we still have an established electrical center on the CRT, which is in this case, on this CRT, this main main graticule line right here. The delay trigger set up to 10 microseconds, and if I switch the polarity, we have it switching equal distant between the top and bottom of the um, between. We have it triggering at the equal distant between the top and bottom. So that looks good there. So that will finish up adjustment number two. And we're on to adjustment number three. Okay, for adjustment number three, we actually don't have anything to do due to the fact that adjustment number three is the main external divide by 10 compensation, C16 but it's only for 7B53As, so the ANs don't have it, it's only for the As, but also it's serial number B210,000 and up. We have a serial number 183,000, so we actually do not have anything to do for adjustment number three, so we get to skip that one, and we're on to adjustment number four. Okay, so we have a brick of stuff hanging off the front of the scope. Um, we needed an RC normalizer. The manual calls for a 7A16A, which has a 20 picofarad input. This has a 22 picofarad input, so I have a 22 picofarad normalizer on it with a 50 ohm terminator and a 10x attenuator. This cable is running up to the output of my 106, my square wave generator. And it wants volts per division to be 0.1, which we have set. The controls that need to change on the 7B53 are main triggering. Let's get this back up here. We want DC coupling, uh, 1x magnification. So we have some signal. Uh, we have good triggering, DC triggering, 1x mag, time division or delay time of one millisecond. Pull that back. Delayed time is 0.5. Delayed triggering is DC. And we want external triggering. One, two, Three, four, five. So we want five divisions of display. Yeah. Oh, point five. All right, so what we want to do 
We need to hook this thing up to the... We need to hook the signal and everything, this whole thing, up to the delayed trigger in. Well, I noticed one more fault I'm going to address, um, which is going to make me probably start over this Cal document again. But uh, if we take a look at the scope screen, we have a triggered sweep. Actually, if I do normal, yep, we have a triggered sweep. However, there we go. We don't have a trigger light. So I'm going to, uh, let me tear down this plug in a little bit more, see if I can't fix that trigger light. And uh, I will probably update that to an LED so it doesn't burn out again. But when I get that done, I'll bring you guys back and show you what it took to repair that. Okay, so I've had to use these in a couple of videos. I just wanted to, and this one I actually had to take apart. Um, so I figured I'd get some footage of it and show you guys what's in one of these RC normalizers. Um, what I have taken apart so far is we have the input RC normalizer, 1 mega ohm, 22 picofarads, and it's to be used directly on the BNC inputs. So the input to the scope should be right here. I've caught the plug-in back up to where we were on step four after figuring out the trigger light. Trigger light ended up being a custom tech IC that uh, wasn't sinking enough current to actually light the light bulb up. So there's something shorted out in there. But the uh, input normalizer, all the input normalizer is is an adjustable, adjustable capacitor on the bottom, a resistor, and a capacitor, and that's it. You get to the adjustable cap by pulling this cap off. Right there, there's the capacitor adjustment. Everything's in parallel. Um, the values are very specifically chosen for the individual RC normalizer. The reason I had to take this one apart was this jack was loose and was giving me all kinds of noise and wasn't working quite right on the scope. Turns out this set screw was loose, so I had to tighten that. And then for good measure, I reflowed the solder on the BNC jack. These BNC jacks look okay. Since I had it open, I figured I'd uh, show you guys what was in it. Because there's not much to one of these, but they're really important when you need them. So I will get this put back together, and then we'll get back to calibrating the uh, plug-in. Okay, and after the repair of the normalizer, we have so much less noise on the um, input. So that was needed doing. But what I need to do now is I need to pull the normalizer out and connect it to the delayed trigger input. But then I'm going to need to hook up a scope to test point 415 for the adjustments. So let me get that done, and I will be right back. We'll do the adjustment, because I have an extra scope up here on the Rigel. We'll do the adjustment on the Rigel and just let the... Um, 7704 set. Okay, well in step four I found an error. Um, the service manual says for serial numbers 2099999 and below, um, you're supposed to hook up to uh, test point 415. This is a um, 183,000 serial number. My other plug-in is a 104,000 serial number, this guy right here. I also happen to have a 7B53A that is a 24,000 serial, 24, 241,000 serial number. And if you take a look, here's the test point they want you to find. That does not exist in these lower level plugins. I'll show you guys real quick. Let's see. Yeah, here's the trigger board. So we have 
see if I can get it to stay. I'll hold it. Doing this around the camera is actually a lot harder than it looks. But if you take a look, these are the two same sides of the plug-in. These boards are laid out completely different. There's a lot of updates between the revisions. The newer ones on the top here, the older ones on the bottom. So there is no test point for 415. I'm going to also see if I can find 315. And if I can find 315, we'll continue. If I can't find 315, I will have to assume that those, those test points only are in the later revision. So let me uh, dig into some schematics a little bit and see what I can find. Well, I have found test point 214, or 415. Test point 415 is the base of um, Q420. Uh, the only place it's actually called out uh, because there's no test point for it is in the schematic itself. I will print that out and I will show you guys where that is here in a moment. Um, but for right now, I'm going to get my scope probe hooked up and we will uh, do this adjustment because it looks like we can. Okay, and here is the reading off the base of Q420. Let's see what we can do to clean that up just a little bit. Let's see if I need a tuning tool that is non capacitive. It was staring at me on the bench. Okay, so for this one, we need to adjust C401. And let me get out my other plug in real quick and I can show you guys where the adjustment is because these two plugins are actually the same. So here's the plug in. We're going to be adjusting this variable capacitor right here for the best square corner. Okay, get a little bit of signal clean up there, turning on some averaging. Not much, because I want to be able to, I don't want the scope to take forever to update. But see how that's flattening out? Actually, that top corner looks pretty good. Let me zoom into that top corner real quick. That's what I'm really concerned about is that upper corner. Yeah, that looks okay. So it's not, that looks just fine. So we should be good there. Now I need to find 315. So that's probably going to be another schematic find again. Once I find that, I will let you guys know where it is, and I'll be back. Okay, same deal. This is the transistor pack right here. You want to... The test point is the base of Q320 on this one, so where it was this transistor on the delayed, it's the further one back on the main. So I'll get this GoPro hooked up, and we'll take a look at the trigger. Well, that could use some uh, adjusting for sure. We have a giant spike, so let's see. What are we adjusting here? C301. 
which happens to be almost a mirror of the delay trigger circuit. C301 is right here. So we'll get that adjusted. For the best looking corner we can get. There is not much adjustment here. I think it's going to be about as squared off as that corner is going to get. So we will call it at that. Now we're adjusting the divide by 10. Um, the only thing that changes in the setup is focus. We get rid of the 10x attenuator and its signal to 50 ohm terminator to normalizer. Bring you guys back up to the scope. And then we're adjusting C16 for best square corner. So let me find C16 real quick. So of all the test points so far, C16 is pretty easy to find. C16 is right there. That is actually on the uh, there we go. The switch panel board. This side. There's C16. I love the way these boards look with the sweeping lines and the gold traces. Stuff doesn't get built like this anymore. So all we're doing is adjusting C16 for best corner. That's really slow. Okay, we'll go with that for now. So I figured I would point out why I use some of this older gear that, um, like the 191 and the 106 and the 184, they're based on vacuum tubes, yes. Um, the 191 is a constant amplitude signal generator. Sorry about the camera. Um, the way I've got this set up is the 191 is coming through this cable directly into the front of the frequency counter. The frequency counter is backed up by a GPS disciplined oscillator. So there's a external reference. Actually, you can't see that because of the plug. But it says external reference right here, which is telling me that it's locked into the external oscillator. It hasn't fully warmed up yet. That's why it's kind of drifting around a little bit. But if I take the 191, which is fully warmed up, back this down just a touch. I'm barely tapping this control. But you're seeing on these digits, they're bouncing a little bit because the 
crystal ovens changing temperature a little bit. It's an ovenized crystal, but the heater's not on all the time, so it's fluctuating a little bit with temperature. But this is off by 0.5 hertz out of 1 megahertz. So this is 1.5 hertz off. The, the oven just turned on. That's why it's speeding up a little bit. But it's it's wildly accurate for a device that's as old as it is and still based on tubes and not uh, solid state. So I do find the device to be incredibly stable. Works good when you see it shoot up like that. I think the, if I remember correctly, the oven's on. And as it drifts back down, the oven's off. So as it's getting faster in frequency, the crystal's warming up. As it's getting slower, the crystal's cooling off. But to be able to have an adjustment and hold accuracy like that, it's plenty for calibrating a scope that needs 3% accuracy. So this is 1, one megahertz, 0.5. <laughs> so incredible accuracy out of the 191. Um, I will be taking the 191 apart. Um, I had to check its frequency on here because it is um, it needs it needs an adjustment. Uh, the dial does not match up. It'll hold frequency real well, but the dial doesn't match up with what the frequency is. So I need to adjust a little bit. If you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll get that pulled apart. And now that I have the frequency counter with the GPS disciplined oscillator, we should be able to make that very accurate to the dial. So I will get this hooked back into the 7704 and we will work on the main high frequency triggering of the plug-in. So I will be right back. Okay, so for this test we have the 191 patched into the vertical 100 megahertz frequency as verified by the counter. The test calls for 1.5 divisions of display. We have that. I have the trigger way off hard left just to get the display correctly. So what it should do is if I zero the if I zero the trigger, it should trigger. And it does. So with the trigger at zero, we have a trigger display. I can back this off so you guys can see the waveform. There we go. But we have a triggered display, so the capacitor C323 does not need adjustment. However, uh, I got everything set up for the delay high frequency triggering. Delayed triggers at the about the 8 o'clock position. 0.05 microseconds for delay trigger. Coupling is AC sources internal and we should have a sweep on the screen. We're still main triggered, but we're not delay triggered. So I will need to adjust C423. So let me find out where C423 is and I'll show you guys and then we'll make the adjustment. Okay, we have yet another weirdness. I checked the parts list. It turns out C423 is in this serial number. It's a fixed capacitor, so there's nothing to adjust. Um, starting in serial number B, 230,000, it went to a variable, but in this case it's fixed, so nothing to adjust in step six. Okay, what we've got going so far is that actually concluded the triggering section, so we're into the horizontal system adjustment now. So I got a voltmeter between 580 and ground. I have to. I had to set the positioning control to zero volts. Uh, now I need to change time per division to two milliseconds. Delayed time to one millisecond. And I need to move the test lead from 580 to 690. So uh, let me get the. Uh, I'll move this around and I'll show you where the two test points are. Okay, test points are 580 is right here above this capacitor. Um, 
690 is right here, right above the delayed offset resistor. It is not marked. And then what we need to do is we need to adjust R675, which I believe is right here, the delayed sweep offset. And we need to make that zero volts. And then there's interaction with step seven. So you want to go back and check step seven again. Okay, we're adjusting the main sweep calibration right now. So I have time markers coming out of the 184. The control we're adjusting is right here on the front panel, as you can see by the screen. Um, we are a little compressed. So speed-wise, the plug-in's a little slow. So what I will do is I'm going to move you guys sideways, so it's going to be a little off, off to the side for the camera because I need to be straight on for this. And then I will adjust the um, I'll adjust the sweep rate of the plug-in for the time marks. So what I'm looking for is I want all the time marks to line up vertically on the graticule lines. Okay, so in adjusting this, we need our 564, which is this guy right here, main sweep length. So that's who I'll be adjusting. Detune this completely so it moves all the way out. You want this adjusted right there. So small time marker at 0.5 divisions when the 11th marker is on the center graticule. So we need to do that again for the delayed sweep. It's the exact same adjustment, except we need to do it. We need to change the time base. So let me get that set up and we'll do the adjustment real quick. OK, so on this particular plugin, the delayed time is actually slightly long. It's over the 0.4 divisions. So we need to back it off just a little bit. And I do that with our. 652. Get my stunt plug in right here. And our 652 is right here. Get him adjusted real quick. Yeah, so see, we can bring that out. So there's the main. There we go. So now this is also one place where the 184, you can't do this with a TG501. So I have to use the 184 for this one because it's the only one that can do the dual, the dual time markers. Okay. Um, checking the delay time dial. The intensify portion is working correctly. If I wiggle this, uh, let's see. Actually, let me pull the intensity down. There it is. So at 9.0 right here, the intensify starts. You can see it moving back and forth. Barely. It doesn't show up on camera that well. So that works. But then if I move it, here it is moving as I'm rolling it back. At 1.0. It's starting on the second time mark. So the intensity is working just fine.
This is the correct de delayed sweep starting point. So just starting there, time marker, and that is exactly on 1.0. Uh, they want us to check 9 again. There we go. And the stop should the stop needs to be adjusted just a little bit. So um, five seventy two. very touchy control so that's about perfect for there and it'll probably and it interacts with 1.0 all right we have a little bit too long of a tail just a touch too long of a tail at the start point so we're gonna do our 576 and we're gonna back it off that's too much just slightly right there gives us a good start point and that is exactly at 1.0 on the delayed sweep dial so we are good on the sweep it's all good um, we're up to step 12 in the service manual which is adjusting the main and delayed sweep high frequency timing um, that's going to be C 549, 594 and 691. And on my stunt plug-in, it's going to be this cap right here, this big guy. And it's going to be this cap down here, this guy. So let me get the scope reset. I also got to put some different time markers in because it looks like we're down in the one microseconds. And uh, we'll get started with that. So once I get everything set up, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, so we're just checking timing marks. And as we can see, it's going to be off just a touch. So... That capacitor is going to need to be adjusted. This is not the delayed sweep, so this is the main sweep. So we're on the top cap. And we're doing all this on the 0.1 microseconds per division. So my reference points, as with everything the scope does, is second and tenth division. Everything looks good there. Um, so we are good for that cap. Needed to turn on the delay time because we need to do the bottom capacitor for delay time. It's the same adjustment it's just the one on the bottom it's a little slow doesn't need much we'll call that good right there again reference points are here and there so that one looks good there uh, wants me to check Even higher speed timing. So this is actually delayed time on 0.05. We want one microsecond markers.
that's one microsecond. There's the second time marker. There's so first time marker. Second time marker. The exact setting of the delay time dial is one point uh, it's one point five four with the time marker in the center of the graticule. So we need to add eight, so nine point five four. I messed that up. So what they want is at 1.0 to get it to hit the second time mark, or the second marker. So that is 1.0. So the second time mark, which is right there, is one dot, let's see, one point seven five. All right, so it's one point seven five. So that means we need nine point seven five. That's what they're looking for. They want the tenth marker to be in the same position. And then we're done with that. Disconnect all test equipment. Next thing up is 13. So let me figure out what we need to do there. And I will be back. But I have to reset the scope because it's set the controls as given under the preliminary control settings. So I have to reset up all the scope and then figure out what signals it needs. Okay, so step 13 is a um, delayed is checking is just checking the the delayed sweep gate output which is available in the rear of the scope I, if I ever need that I'll take a look at it I very rarely use the rare inputs so I'm not worried about 13 also if I need to check it this is I, I read through the caliber uh, the adjustment procedure there's nothing to adjust it's just checking it and I could very easily validate that with a different scope. So it's just a way of validating itself with itself, but it doesn't uh, doesn't have any bearing on how well the plug-in functions or, or uh, works or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do, clean up some of this stuff here real quick. What I will do is, since we have a functioning scope now and we have, we have, we have a functioning time base, let's throw some signals at it and I got some function generators and stuff like that, and we'll just bounce it off of my, uh, take do some frequency measurements, bounce it off of my frequency counter, see how accurate we did and how well we did. Um, the other thing I'll do is I will print out the schematics, those two test points that were really hard to find. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys where those were in the schematics, and uh, it was for the two transistors that were up top here and here. But uh, yeah, we'll throw it in. Uh, the 7A26 is a 200 megahertz plug-in. It's a 200 megahertz frame. It's a 100 megahertz time base. 
So the frame's fine. We'll push the time base pretty hard, and we will see. Uh, let's see how accurate we got. So give me a minute to get some signals set up, and I'll also get the uh, extender off of the back of the time base. So I'll get the time base, the covers on it, and put in the put in the scope, and then we'll play a little bit. So the uh, parts count on this one was pretty low. This is the carnage shot at the end of the video. Well, close to the end of the video. In going through the scope, what I found was bad. We had that one control that was toasted, the uh, main triggering control for the unit. We also had this IC was bad, which is why the triggered light wasn't working. As we can see, the triggered light's not working, so everything's good there. So not too bad on parts count. But let's see how we did for accuracy. So I have no idea how fast this is yet. I, I just have a random sine wave going into the scope. This being a 100% analog scope, it does not have any of the fancy measurement capabilities of another scope. There are a couple of scopes in this in the 7000 series that can. I'm looking. I'm looking for one. I don't have it yet, but uh, since we just aligned the plug-in and I'd already aligned the frame and I know this vertical is good, we should be able to take an accurate frequency measurement. To take an accurate frequency measurement with a fully analog scope, you just pick a place on the waveform. I'm going to use the center graticule line. Brighten this up for you guys so you can see it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the controls and I'm going to position it right here at the corner at the start. Actually, let me use the uh, second. Yeah, that'll actually put it right on the second and tenth. Graticule lines for me. Uh, I just randomly spun the dial on the 191, so I actually have no idea what frequency this is even supposed to be. So we're going to discover that together and then what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll throw it into the frequency counter which I just turned on so it's got to warm up for a little bit. We'll just check the frequency and see uh, how close the scope is. Now this particular scope I believe the spec on this is 3% so anything within 3% is plenty. Uh, so I'm going to use a center graticule line. We are at One hundred nanoseconds per division. So every major division on the graticule is hundred nanoseconds. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll call it eight point one divisions because it comes up right between the uh, the one and the two. So we have eight point one divisions of signal at 100 nanoseconds per div. Uh, for those of you who are math phobic, there will be a slight bit of math. So that would mean we actually multiply 8.1 divisions by 100 nanoseconds, which would give us 810 nanosecond period and to get the frequency of that we invert that so it would be 1 over 8 10 is in megahertz that I need a calculator for 1 divided by 8 10 well, that's convenient. Okay, it almost, almost looked like I planned that. It is, so, 1 over 8, 10 is equal to 0 0.00, 0 .00 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. Now, I promise I did not... I just randomly spun the dial. I don't even know what the frequency is yet. Well, we, we now know what the frequency is. So 
yeah, was not expecting that. So because this is nanoseconds, a uh, little bit more multiplication is needed. Doing this the easy way, you actually do it in uh, milliseconds converts to hertz. So if we're going to do this in milliseconds because it's nanoseconds on the scope. Turn this down so I don't burn the screen. Because it's nanoseconds on the scope, it would be 0 0.000. This is milli, micro. Now we have nano, so 810. And we take all of that over 1, which gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 0, 1 hertz. And if we put the commas in, 3, 3, 3, that ends up being 1.2, megahertz. And so now, if I take the Terminator, and we move this up here. The frequency counter has a measured frequency of one, two, three, nine, four, six, three. Point three seven uh, and this is it this is actually in Hertz, which means we have this is our answer. This is our measured. Error is, get this into megahertz. So I want to check 1.2345. Five, six, seven, nine, oh, one, one point two, three, nine, four, six, three, three, seven, zero. Okay. Okay, so to find the error percentage in this, we need to take this is the measured value. So we'll use that as the exact value. So we need to take 1.2345 one point two three nine four six three three seven zero run that over one point two three nine four six three three seven zero we need to multiply all of that times 100, and that will give us our percentage of error, and that comes out to be... So, if my math is right, these numbers end up giving me a... We are off by... So the scope is slow by 
zero point three nine percent on a measured value. So I'm happy with it. Time base is supposed to be accurate. It's triggering wonderfully. We have a percentage error of less than one percent. So sweep accuracy actually of this plugin is rated to be within five percent or seven percent in the extended uh, temperature ranges. So we have a five percent accuracy and we're at under one percent. So I'm going to call that plugin done and we should be good to go. And it's triggering nicely. I can just vary that all the way up and down. And it's zeroed well. It's, I. Nah. We could slow this down a little bit. There's 50 kilohertz. We're on microseconds. Turn that on. Yeah, we're on 100 microseconds. We have readout. So. Everything is working with that one. Thanks for stopping by the lab. I hope everybody enjoyed taking a look at a 7B53A, which is the one of the time-based units for a 7000 series scope. This also s concludes, I'll be putting up a playlist that has the three of them f uh, finalizing the 7603 frame over here. So this is now a fully functioning scope the three videos, the the frame, the vertical, and then the horizontal, which we just did, uh, is what was needed to actually calibrate this and make sure that that frame was in spec, ready to go for the lab. So it's it's 100% touched up. Everything is ready to go. Um, it's now a functioning scope that is within its specifications. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions for future videos, I check comments regularly. Let me know. Um, if you'd like to see anything else, let me know. Um, I'll see what I can make happen. So take care for now, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, I almost forgot. We have one last thing to do, which is the best part of any calibration. Just put our my lab cal sticker back on the uh, unit. All it does is say I cal'd it, me, Zen, and the, and the date of month and year. Uh, lets me know when I'm using plugins, when I just have to sanity check them. These particular plugins, they're so old that um, a lot of the drift has probably happened at this point. As I continue to use these, I'll let you guys know, but they're, um, because the components are well-aged and well-burned in, they don't need to be cowled as frequently. They do need to be sanity-checked. All gear should be sanity-checked every once in a while. But in terms of a full-on get the references out and adjust it, realistically, this is probably the first one this has had in a while, if ever. So, yeah, that's all I got. So, he's ready for the 7603. I'll be doing some more calibrations because I have to. I have a whole bunch of uh, verticals and horizontals that need to be patched up for the shelf and just sanity checked. But um, if you guys would uh, like to see some of that, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.